Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before you continue this video, I'd like to tell you that the second volume of our art book, the book of Illustrated of Quran, can be ordered right now. You can support us by buying this book for your niece and nephew. Link in the description below. Assalamualaikum. She comes to the Prophet ﷺ complaining. And when she talks to him, she says a bunch of things about her husband. She says he's an old man, he doesn't have good manners. That's how she starts. She's younger than him, but she's not that young. So she says, I used to be able to have children, but now that I can't have kids anymore, he thinks I'm worthless and he treats me like a servant. And she even goes on to say another narration of the same story. I used to be young and a lot of men wanted to marry me, but I chose him. And look at how he treats me. And today he came home, he was upset. I responded to him, and when I answered back, he gave me some sharp comment. I gave him a sharper comment back. Some of you married men know what that's like. You open your mouth, you say something smart, and you get 10 times worse back. She snapped back at him, and he got so upset, he said to me, from today on, you are like my mother. That's what he said to her. From today, you are like my mother. And this was in Arab tradition before Islam. This was called dihar. And dihar was this ugly practice where when you're really mad at your wife, you say, from today, I swear, you're like my mom. And that means I will never have any kind of relationship with you again because I think of you like my mother now. It's impossible for you and me to be together. And that means they can never be together. So this is like way even worse than divorce. And this was something they used to say before Islam. So he said that to her and then he left. She says he was with his friends for an hour or whatever and then he came back and he wanted to come close to me and I said, no, you're not coming close to me until Allah and his messenger make a decision because you said what you said. I'm not going to let you touch me ever again until I talk to the Prophet ﷺ. So she comes to the Prophet ﷺ and she says that's what he said. What should we do? And the Prophet ﷺ first said, I have no revelation to answer this. Quran talks about divorce, talaq. It doesn't talk about from today you're my mother. It doesn't address that problem. Not yet anyway, so the Prophet ﷺ doesn't have an answer for her. But based on what the Prophet ﷺ can tell, he on his own opinion said to this woman, from as far as I can see, harumti alayhi, you're, you become haram for him. You can no longer be with him. I don't say I know the answer, but this is just my opinion. The Prophet ﷺ didn't give a fatwa on her. He said, this is what I think. And she says, ma qala talaqan. She said, but he didn't say divorce. So she starts arguing back with the Prophet ﷺ. The witnesses to this account say that she was going back and forth and she was actually getting more and more upset with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as she was getting loud, you know, nobody comes and talks to the Prophet like that Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. In other places in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, we learn that if you raise your voice above the Prophet's voice or you call him like you call anybody else, وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضِ أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ If you call on the Prophet وسلم, like you talk about anybody else, you call anybody else. If I see one of my friends, I say, hey bro, come here. Hey Kareem, come here. But if somebody came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Hey Muhammad, we want to talk to you. If you even did that, what does Allah say? Don't you dare talk to him that way. Because all of your good deeds will be taken away. It doesn't matter if you were fighting the battle of Badr, or you made hijrah, or you spent all of your money in charity. All of that will be gone because you talked to the Prophet like that. Because you were casual with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. But this woman is raising her voice. And she's arguing with him. She's debating with him, going back and forth. Understand something. Sometimes the Prophet ﷺ wasn't even saying something from revelation. He was giving his opinion sometimes. There were some people that used to garden. And they were experienced in gardening and farming. And they have certain ways that they grow their plants. And the Prophet ﷺ was passing by. He said, why do you do that? I said, Ya Rasulullah, this is how we grow the plants. He goes, that doesn't make any sense to me. And he just kind of criticized it. But he, he's not a gardener. He's not a farmer. He just said it. And they stopped growing their plants that way. And the next year, the crop didn't grow. And they came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, you said, why do you do that? He said, I didn't tell you not to do that. Antum a'lamu bi umuri dunyakum. You know better about your place. In other words, when the Prophet even says something once, a little bit, nobody argues back. They just do it. Even if he wasn't telling them to do it. And in this case, this woman, even though she hears the Prophet's opinion, she says, but no, he didn't pronounce divorce. I don't understand this answer. When the Prophet didn't have an answer that she wanted, and she, she tried to explain to him, we have children. And then she says that if I leave these children with him, they're going to die. He doesn't know how to take care of kids. He's horrible with children. 
He's got a temper with me, but he's also horrible with children. He can't take care of them. And if I can't ever be with him again, and the kids are in the house, these kids are as good as dead. And then she says, but if I keep the children with me, ja'u, they're going to starve to death. I don't have a means to provide for them. We can't break this family. This is the problem she presents to the Prophet ﷺ. And he doesn't have an answer. And Allah Azzawajal then revealed these four ayat. Because there's some things in here that we have to take with us forever. Like Allah decided that this story should be part of what we recite until Judgment Day for a reason. There are some timeless, timeless lessons here that everybody needs to remember. And that's why Allah made us remember this story.